All right, Chris, we said on Thursday last week, if the Carolina Panthers didn't give up 70 points, let's go. When? Let's go. And and they were up 14 to nothing at one point, man. Oh, my God. Let's go. Hey, momentum into the bye week. Momentum into the bye week. Yeah, they still lost 42 to 21. They're the only 0-6 team in the league. Let's get this sucker started. <laughs> the state of North Carolina covers 53,000 square miles. It is the habitat of the feared Carolina Panthers. Get dialed in, Panthers fans, for an in-depth look at your team. Exclusive interviews. Locker room insight. Let's huddle up for Panthers Playbook. Here are your hosts, Dennis Cox and Chris Lee. Welcome back to another episode of Panthers Playbook. That's Chris Lee, Dennis Cox here with you. Before we break down the loss to Miami and what the Carolina Panthers need to do going into the... You smash that subscribe button and also leave us your thoughts and comments on the Carolina Panthers moving forward as well. And hit the likes and also that notification bell. That way you don't miss any of the content that we put out here, including the episodes that we put out every single Thursday on top of the ones we do post game. All right, let's get into this post game. 42, 21 final score dolphins over the Carolina Panthers. And you mentioned it, Chris, this Panthers team had a 14, nothing lead. And I was like, <laughs> What hey, am man. I watching? What is this? I was like, wait, hold on. There's yeah. balance. There's actually like some some shots. Actually, he's like Bryce Young pushing the ball a bit down the field. Adam Thielen doing his thing. And it's 14 nothing. I was like, hold on. And then the Dolphins remembered, oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're the Dolphins. <laughs> and that they're the Panthers. That happened. 35 straight points after that for the <laughs> Miami Dolphins. Rough. You know, I thought it was kind of interesting because I felt like early on – now, I do think the Panthers did a good job. Well, I'll get to the Panthers in just a second. But early on, I did feel like Mike McDaniel was calling like those – we're just playing the Panthers type of plays. Let's, let's see what we can get a, let's see what we can get away with. That, like, fake sneak, quarterback sneak, but, he, but Tua, like, goes back and does, like, the backwards pass over – uh, to Mostert, and then they have to like punt. They were like third and short, ended up being fourth and long or whatever. Yeah. It was a horrible play, but you could tell that like this was like the very bottom of of the playbook. Like, hmm, let, let's on page two hundred and fifty three. Oh, oh, yeah, let's bring that one out. Let's try to. So you let's know, mess around that a was bit. that's what was happening early on. But I will say this though: the Panthers' offense frustrated the Dolphins' defense in the first quarter. Yeah. Like they didn't know what was happening. They it was as you said balanced. Uh, the run game was going going on well. Shout out to uh, to Chuba Hubbard, fifty rushing yards in the first quarter. Finished uh, the game with eighty eight rushing yards. We can we can talk about that later and and what the Panthers didn't do after the first quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, but he did an amazing job with that. And then also as you said, taking shots down the field. Adam Thielen uh, looking like Minnesota Adam Thielen for a little yeah. bit there. Um, and then you have uh, two drives, 64 and 70, 74 yards, respectively. Uh, and they go up 14 to nothing on Miami. And um, I, I felt like this was the first time I looked at a Frank Reich game that he called in the first quarter and was like, looks good. It's yeah. working. Looks creative. Looks like guys are schemed open. Looks like, you know, it's a, it's a real NFL offense. And uh, I, I can't, I can't, you know, be happier than that. And I hope that they can take this tape from the first quarter and use it to build on after the bye week for the rest of the season. I hope so. Now here's the one problem is that it only happened for a quarter. Only There's nothing quarter. sustained. <laughs> There's nothing sustained by it. Now I'm not saying you got to put up 14 points every quarter in every single game, but if you have the mindset of just get one touchdown a quarter, just one touchdown a quarter, it's 28 points. You're going to be in a lot of games. <laughs> if not winning some at that point. But again, they weren't able to sustain it. Their only other touchdown after the first quarter was the defensive score, which is a pick six by Troy Hill against Matt White, the backup quarterback for the Miami Dolphins when things were already out of case. And the Miami said, you know, we're just going to go ahead and get this touchdown back and make it this 21 point win. Uh, Once again, the one thing that I saw, or what I can say, the one thing that we heard going into the week was this, I put air quotes, simplification of the offense for Carolina. That's where her like, simplify things a little bit. Hey, you're 0-5. 
Sometimes you might be trying to do too much, so you simplify. Okay, so what that that could look like a lot of different things. And I think yeah. sometimes it's actually a simplification of mindset. Because I thought, okay, when I hear simplify going in, myself as a former college lacrosse coach, I think of, all right, what are like three things that we should emphasize going into a game, like going into a week or going into a game? And I think they actually did three things relatively well in this game overall. One, reduction of penalties. Carolina only had three penalties. Oh, in my this game. God. Looked that was an amazing part of that game. Looked drastically different. Two, take care of the ball. Zero turnovers in this game. Zero. Right. Bryce Young, first game we didn't have interception or, or fumble. Like, zero turnovers in this game, which I thought was good. And I thought the third thing, they actually were breaking the huddle with, like, 20 seconds on the play clock. Like, there was a little bit that more was, tempo, I, at least I in the first that quarter. Too. Yes. It's like mm -hmm. sometimes you might simplify in terms of, all right, let's just focus on these three things. And then we'll let everything else take care of itself. Sometimes that's the simplification. All right, let's break the huddle by 20. Let's make sure we cut down on penalties. And let's also make sure we take care of the football. Not saying you don't emphasize those week to week, but when you're doing your individual position work group yep. during the week and things like that, there's a more there's more emphasis and focus on those things. So sometimes you simplify by going back to the basics in a sense, and then everything else building from there. I thought they did that stuff really, really well in the first quarter, and we resulted in those drives. But I also thought they had a chance to get back in it at the end of the first half and they had the missed field goal. I actually thought some of the play calling was a little suspect there late in the first yeah. half as well. I'm like, you had second and two Miami calling a timeout because they're on their heels. You had all three timeouts, Carolina. Just go get that first down and keep this drive going. But they failed to do that. And then Pinheiro misses the 43-yard field goal at the end of the first half which I think really just sapped any sort of momentum that Carolina could have had in this game going forward. And, and I think it goes back to, like, there were times where I felt like Frank Reich was maybe trying to get a little too cute yeah. for the moment. Like, what was working for Steve Wilkes last year? Sometimes, like, if it was second and two, everybody in the stadium knew that P.J. Walker or, uh, or Sam Darnold was going to drop back and hand it off to Deontay Foreman, and he yeah. was going to try to get those two yards, right? It, it just it didn't take a lot. Or if they did try to trick you a little bit, it still ended up being some sort of a run or maybe a, a nice screen pass to LaVisca Chenault, who can make things happen on the edge. And so uh, I think that um, there were times where you're right. After the first quarter, they, they didn't, like, go back to the things that they were doing well, and they never put the Dolphins back on their heels. Yeah. That was one of the things, and, and, and that's one of the more underrated things that happened in that first quarter, was that was the first time all season, all season, that the opposing defense, were they were on their heels. Yeah. They literally looked disorganized. And this is one of the top teams in the NFL, a potential uh, Super Bowl, uh, you know, contending team. And so, you know, whatever that was in the first quarter, Frank Reich, and crew, whatever you guys did, a little bit more of that because it showed that you have uh, the guys to get it done uh, if you do it the right way. I always caution this, though, is that every team, every player, every every organization, whatever, they're capable of a great moment. You know, like, let's be honest. That Miami team outmatches that Carolina team, just like top to bottom. Oh, sure. They were just 100% oh, outmatched. Sure. So, yeah, you had a great moment. But can you actually sustain that? I'm still skeptical about that for sure. But now that the question is, you're 0-6, you're going into a bye week, Chris. Miles Sanders, injured, banged up, did not play in this game. Chuba Hubbard as that number one back, just carrying the load, looked pretty good. I still don't think he, he's not a game-breaking player, but the dude's going to get you first down, so he's going to keep the chains moving. That's something he's capable of doing. Uh, Miles Sanders was hurt in the preseason, didn't play in any preseason games was hurt during much of the season, groin injury, shoulder. They get a chest injury for a little bit there as well. Dude's banged up, beat up. Bye week came at a perfect time for him, but LaVisca Chenault goes down with an injury as well. A lot of questions about just the health of this team moving forward the rest of the season. Bye week cannot come fast enough. Well, let's, let's keep it with uh, the running backs. Uh, yeah. Right now, I feel like um, Chuba Hubbard needs to be your running back number one. And you've been he on this RB1. for a while. You've been on this and, for a while. Um, and, and that's something where – and I'm, I'm not saying that Miles Sanders can't come back and, and retake that number one's position, uh, but Chuba Hubbard's been the one that's been uh, been producing. Let's just go back and, and look throughout the season. Today was the first time, Dennis, that the Carolina – since week one, that the Carolina Panthers had a running back to have over 50 yards rushing. 
Now, back on week one, they had oh. two guys who did it. Of course, Miles Sanders and Chuba Hubbard both did it. Oh. And, and if you go back and look at the, the yardage that they both gained, Miles Sanders had 12 more yards than Chuba Hubbard did, but Chuba Hubbard had literally half the carries that Miles Sanders did, 9 yeah. to 18. I, I believe the final was something either like 82 to 70, uh, 82 yards to 70 yards, or, or either 72 to 60 yards or something like that. Mm-hmm. They both were over 50 during that, uh, during that game. And still, Chuba Hubbard looked like the better runner. So our eyes aren't lying. Whenever Chuba Hubbard is getting uh, over 10 carries, he's doing something with it. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, again, Miles Sanders can't come back and, and retake that position, but whether it's the injuries, whether he's not seeing it right or whatever it is, he's just not producing. So, you know, I hate that he's injured. I hate that he's not 100%. I hate that he hasn't been able to show what he could do uh, for the Carolina Panthers like we did last year with the Philadelphia Eagles. But Chuba Hubbard is number one right now. And even in spurts, I thought Raheem Blackshear looked pretty good. And so uh, it makes you wonder what, what's going to happen with that. Now, I do think that the Carolina Panthers don't uh, do a very good job in trying to sustain the run game. No, uh, I do think that don't. Frank Reich gives up on it a little too quickly. There are situations where you probably should run it that, you know, he's that Bryce Young is throwing it, you know, what, what was it towards the end of the game where it was, uh, you had the, what the, the fourth and one or whatever it was. And, and, and Bryce Young is trying to get it 40 yards down to Hayden Hurst and he missed him in the end zone. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Like what? Like, you know, good looking play. And I'm glad you pushed it down the field. That's not the time for it right there. No. I get you want to find put the defense on the heels because they're going to expect you to run the ball on fourth and one. But if you're going to throw it, don't drop, don't do the seven step drop and let it go. You got to get that thing out pretty quick <laughs> to, 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 you know, get that first down. So I, I do think that there needs to be um, something. You have Deuce Staley and Thomas Brown on your roster, two former running backs. Like, let's get this run game together. Yeah. Because that's going to help Bryce Young so much. And we saw Iki Iquanu have probably his best game. And a lot of it was because they are running left behind him. And it shows you how nasty he is. And when he is that nasty and he got his confidence going, then he's going to pass protect a little bit better. Because let's be real, that offensive line is leaking from the middle and on the right side where Taylor Moten is at. Oh, yeah. yeah let's just keep it real. Let's just keep it real. So – you know, and, and one of the things you can do to help that is the run game. This same offensive line looked so much better last year with the run game when it was going and also pass blocking. Uh, and a lot of that was because they were running the ball very well. Those guys had confidence and it kept the defense on their heels. Unfortunately for Carolina, Austin Corbett's still out and uh, Brady Christensen, yeah. their two starting guards from last season, uh, have missed, yeah. you know, all but one game that was Brady Christensen played in the opener. That's it. Corbett hasn't played yet this season and Christensen is done for the year. All right, Chris hit me with one or two things that Carolina needs to work on most in the bye in the bye week. And I'll tell you the one thing that they need to work on during the bye week. (laughs) One. Okay. So I'm going to do one thing for each side of the ball. Is that okay? All right. Hammer it. Uh, Just what I just said, offensive line. Like we still need to protect Bryce Sure. because after that first quarter, uh, he was running for his life a little bit. Even that first drive when he dropped back and he got hit from behind, I mean, he he that ball dropped, and he luckily fell on top of the ball. So we could have had an early turnover for the Carolina Panthers uh, in the game. But we need to get back to protecting Bryce, bro, because uh, it, it, he's shown that when he has time, he can do some amazing things with it. On the defensive side of the ball, um, I know that there were, what, five uh, missing starters uh, Something for, like for that. the Carolina Panthers, um, uh, for for this game, it, it's it's a lot, and I mean they are they are truly banged up. You remember the days when the Carolina Panthers, even though they were like mediocre, you could pretty much guarantee an eight and eight, nine and seven, seven and nine type of season for them. Yeah. Their defense was nasty, and mm-hmm. you were you weren't going to go up and down the field on them the way teams have been. The only team that's allowed more points this season than the Carolina Panthers are the Denver Broncos. And that was basically the measuring stick heading into this game because we were like, as long as the Miami Dolphins don't score 70, this is a good – they can score a 69, but as long as they don't score 70, this mm-hmm. is a win. Um, this is not acceptable. And, again, 
I know that you are hurt on that side of the ball. But uh, being that bad as far as letting teams score on defense just cannot happen. There were opportunities right there for the defense to get some stops, to help the offense get back into it. And, you know, even though the offense, they're going to stall. But a lot of the reason why the why the Panthers ended up giving up what was like 35 unanswered points, a lot of it had to do with the defense. And we already know that this offense is going to be a work in progress. So we can't expect the offense to go out there and keep you in games uh, in the same way. So defense, I need you to step up, whatever that is. And I know that the pass rush as a part of that has been not good. Brian Burns, where are you at? Yeah. No, there are no quarterbacks that the Panthers are going against that are feeling stressed by their defense whatsoever. And that's not good. None. No stress, no pressure, nothing like that. One thing they need to figure out during the bye week, who are you keeping? That's it. <laughs> that's it. No, I'm, I'm being dead serious because Those we've trade seen rumors. Al- where there's a lot yeah. of trade rumors. Uh, we even saw uh, Albert Breer, um, who is uh, works for Monday Morning Quarterback, uh, as well as up in uh, NBC Sports up in Boston. Reports yep. are there are a lot of people looking at Jeremy Chin, Dante mm. Jackson, Brian Burns, mm. Derek Brown, mm. Terrace Marshall mm. Jr. There are a lot Wait, of names. He, barely... put Derek, he put Derek Brown in that too? I think Derek Brown was made. Actually, maybe Der- I, I may have misspoke there on Derek Brown. My apologies on that. Oh, uh, but definitely say, Brian oh Burns God. was included in that <laughs> as well. Uh, but honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if, if Brian Burns has – I'm sorry, if Derek Brown is, is sought after by another team as well. Like, he, he's – on the fourth year of his rookie contract, he still has his fifth year, and he's a young, talented player. Wouldn't surprise me if some teams try and go after him uh, this uh, this upcoming trade, trade deadline. Trade deadline is a couple weeks away, roughly about where we are. The Carolina Panthers, this season's cooked. This season's done. Let's be real. This season's done. The thing you have to start looking at is, like, okay, who is legit going to help us in 24 and in 25? And if the answer is no, move them. That's the legit answer. If you don't think that you can bring a person back or they're not willing to sign to come back by for next year and the year after, move them. Simple as that. Because this team needs players. This roster yeah. overall, top to bottom, stinks. It is not a good roster at all. They have six draft picks coming up in 2024. They need to be about double that. And here's that, the thing. Me- they, they, they have to figure out. The bye week is for them to figure out, okay, if we can't get a deal done with Jeremy Chin, then we got to move him. What's the most value we can get? If Derek yeah. Brown isn't willing, like you go to his agent, hey, you want to sign a long-term deal? No? Okay, then you got to move him. Brian Burns, by all, all accounts, those guys are far apart on a deal. And I hate saying this. If you don't think that you can get a long-term deal done with Brian Burns, then you got to move him now. Otherwise, you can franchise tag him. Then what? You're done for a year. Then you get nothing out of him. You're not going to win in 2024 either. I hate saying it. This Panthers team is not going to win in 2024. Let me push back on you just a little bit right Do there. it. Because uh, this is, of course, there's a lot of new pieces. But for the most part on defense, this is a lot of the same pieces from last year, right? Somewhat. It's mostly, I mean, Von Bell is new. Some of the defensive linemen are new. But yeah. for the most part, this is the, this, is the, this is the same defense, right? Um, and the offense has, you know, the offensive line, and, and that's a, a lot of – that's a lot that's there. Is it that it's a bad roster? Now, I don't think that it's, it's top 10. I don't even know if it's top 15. Nah. I do think it's a middle I, – I would say that it's possibly a middle-of-the-road roster because if Steve Wilkes, Steve Wilkes had this team for 17 weeks last year, they make it to the playoffs, right or wrong. Oh, that roster they had last year? Yeah, but last year's roster is better than this year's roster. Last year's roster is better than this year's roster. The same, it's basically the same roster from the end of the season. Now, I'm not including Christian McCaffrey. I'm not including Christian McCaffrey, mm. right? But it's basically the same roster. We're missing Deontay Foreman and, and Sam Darnold and P.J. Walker. You, you'd rather have those guys? No, I'm not saying we'd rather have, have those Deontay guys, but it's not, that, it's not really that similar. I'd like to have Deontay Foreman. But here's, here's the main part, point I wanted to make, and I, think, and I want to give a shout-out to Sheena um, uh, Quick, who put this out there earlier this week. Is it that the roster is bad or you got a coaching staff on both sides of the ball that's forcing their system on uh, a group of guys that don't fit their system? Yes. The answer is yes. I don't think their roster is that good last season anyway, and I don't think the coaching staff is doing the right thing with the, with the players Again, that they have either. It's yes. I don't think they're 
I don't think they're a top roster, but I also don't think this is an zero and six roster at all. I, they're, they're, I think a lot of I think a lot of this ha- is has has to be coaching because you're, they're not putting players in position. Think about what we've talked about, what me and you have talked about the last few weeks. Where's Jeremy Chin? And you're only playing him right now because you have injuries. Other than that, my man's not really getting snaps. Why does Brian Burns keep dropping back in uh, in coverage instead of going to, towards uh, the the quarterback? Um, you know, why why did you get rid of uh, what's my man Marquand Marquand McCall, who was by far your best nose tackle at the beginning of the season? Like what? Like there are some there's some weird choices happening here, uh, in, in my in my estimation. And so, do, is this a top ten roster? No. Is this a top fifteen roster? No, no. not at all. It's a bottom there 10 roster. There are a lot of holes. There's a lot of holes there, but they're not in this is not an 0 and 6 roster. And so a lot of a lot of what they have to do is on the coaching staff. Like this is this is 100 percent I think, a coaching failure along with some of uh, some of the other holes that's in the roster, and especially after the uh, the injury start happened. I honestly, I mean, do you know why they're an 0 6 roster? Because they're 0 and 6. But here's the thing: it's a bottom 10 roster. I thought they're a bottom 10 roster going into this season. They had some nice pieces, but let's be real. I thought they're a bottom 10 on the league mm. roster. Yeah, bottom mm. 10 on the league roster. I mean, mm. yeah, 100%. I thought they're a bottom 10 in the roster. I do think roster I, going I do into think another season. coach, I do think another coach could this team under another coach would be 3 and 3 right now. Mm, that's pushing it. Steve Steve Wilkes if he was named head coach. And I was yeah. just going to say this. If he was named head coach instead of Frank Reich, this team would be 3 and 3 right now. I, what a, what if, but guess what? They're not Frank Frank's your head coach. And this roster is not very good. Top to bottom. It's just not good. It's simple as that. It's just not good. Hey, Hayden Hurst, free agent signing at tight end. Where, where are you at? Where are you at? Yeah, he's missing. Exactly. He's you missing. have one catch today. Cool. Cool. Like, great. Like you, you put up third string tight end numbers. Like you really do. Like th- that's, that's it. That's we were told. By Scott Fitterer this offseason. Hey, guess what? Everything, every position with the exception of one, every position group, the exception of one was at or above where it was last season. No, it ain't. No, <laughs> it ain't. Because guess the what? One we talked Miles about Sanders. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> no, it's not. It's like, guess what? The offensive line looked good in the run game late last season, but offensive line protection pass wise, they were average. That's it. They were just they average last job. season. They, they were average. They're middle, they're middle of the pack. And guess what? But your receiving another... core is not any better. Your tight ends still stink. Your running backs aren't better. We talked about depth in the secondary. Well, guess what? You didn't go address that issue in the offseason either. So guess what? They got what? Von Bell. You're... Well, okay. Now I'm talking like in the cornerback position. Cornerback position. Von Bell's been great, but he didn't yeah. even play this week. He and Xavier Woods. You literally had three or four starting yeah. defensive backs out. So, yeah, no, this roster is not better than it was last season. Far from it. It wasn't I... even a great roster last year. I, I think I think that is if I compare the I'm not saying it's better than last season. Um, you know, I think it's probably about the same as as what it was last season. And this I same just, team weak, weak. This roster's weak. The same team almost almost made almost made the playoffs under Steve Wilkes after that horrible start. So I, I really do think that it, it's a lot of it is just a coaching staff that just isn't tailoring what they do towards the players that they have. And again, I think it's criminal that that you haven't used Jeremy Chin in the way that he could be used. Yeah. I mean, you talk about, you know, defensive back depth right there. That's somebody, that's a weapon that you just haven't even used the right way. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, we, I, again, I'm not saying that this is a top roster. I don't want anybody <laughs> to get my words mixed up, but I, I do think that this is a roster that somebody can take and do something with. And Frank Reich is not that person right now. Now I hope they get their people, but I do agree with you on the fact that at some point you got to move somebody. And if mm-hmm. you have to move Jeremy Chen, even though I don't, I wouldn't want it, move him. Yeah. Um, Terrace Marshall, I wouldn't want it, move him. Brian Burns, I don't, I'm not with that. I'm not with that. Unless you're getting two firsts and something else, I'm not with it. Put that tag on him because you don't have a pass rush as it is right now. And it'll be even worse. It'll be even worse if you move Brian Burns. This will be the worst team in the league if you move Brian Burns. I mean, I mean, they're pretty close to it. Remember, I mean, they are the worst team. I mean, in the let's league let's be real. They are the worst team in the league. <laughs> they are the worst team in the league. They're the only team that hasn't won a game yet. 
And the only reason why they were close to making a playoffs last season is because the rest of the division sucked. <laughs> Let's call it what it is. The rest of the division sucked. That's the only reason That's why real. they were close last season. That's, That's it. True. Like, they weren't That's a quote-unquote playoff roster even last season. So, yeah, okay, you bring back the same roster. Who's to say that you're actually going to be a playoff team this year? Because uh, guess what? They're not. And I don't see this team being a, a 2021 playoff overall pick team. quarterback right now. <laughs> Could you imagine their pick is going to be Caleb Williams? Their pick is going to be Caleb Williams. Hey, the you Panthers know what? The pick that the Bears have is going to be Caleb Williams. You know what? How's that? He Let that look, sink in. He didn't look so good against Notre Dame, but let's oh, just, he had let's one just bad game. He had one, he had, he had bad, one game. bad game. He had one, one bad, bad game. game. Yeah, that dude's still gonna put up one. five thousand yards. <laughs> dude's so good. And Marvin right. Harrison Jr. <laughs> That's what they're gonna get with those two picks. If the Chicago Bears get Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr., and they're gonna have DJ Moore with DJ Moore. <laughs> hey. Shout out to P.J. Walker being the first quarterback to go head-to-head with Brock Purdy and win. You know, we got to celebrate all of our Panthers wins here. Hey, Christian McCaffrey, even though he's hurt right now, kept his streak going. Yeah. How many is this? How many games is this with a touchdown? 15. That could have been a Panther. 15. Man. Could have been a Panther. We, Panther alum. Uh, great to, podcast. Yeah. Good stuff. Hey, <laughs> hey, to quote Dolph Ziggler, it should have been me. There we go. Should have been the doing a great job calling those games on five. Let's go. Give it up to him. Celebrate. Ron Rivera getting a big win for the Washington Commanders. Against a divisional opponent. Let's go. On the road. Let's go. Gosh. I will I'll close on this. The Panthers could have had. I'll close on this. Remind everyone, Thursday we have an episode. Even before the bye week, we'll still have an episode coming out on Thursday. Um Carolina Panthers, since the start of 2019, have the worst record, worst winning percentage in the entire NFL. You're a first in something. Listen, you can only go up from here. Exactly. Hey, <laughs> only going up from here, baby. You can only baby. go up from here. Momentum into the bye week. Only up from here. Momentum into the anywhere. bye week. <laughs> we'll see you Thursday.